following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. All right. Today... <laughs> is uh, August 17th, 2022. Yes, we're live yesterday on the 16th. Um, right before I get on the internet, my internet went out. Right before I get on the radio show. And uh, so that was a, a pretty bad thing. It was out a lot, uh, off and on, mostly off for about four or five hours uh, yesterday. And um, I called up the company and I vociferously uh, complained and little did I know my wife was also on the phone doing the very same thing and we both uh, just gave that company a polite what for uh, you can't do this you know this is not good we've called many times and uh, so we said I want a reimbursement uh, we're thinking about going someplace else I mean just gave it to them and so they got a tech guy coming out on Saturday to check the area now get this about two or three years ago um, we had some more internet problems and it was really interesting we, we uh, you know just it went down and uh, I called up the company after it was down for a couple of hours I said look what, what's up and they said we don't have any outage, outages I says well I can't get on and they said well nothing's out and I said well can you send a tech guy out here so we had to wait two days they sent a tech guy out and uh, he talked to me and he stared at me after he figured out what the problem was, he said, you know, it's really unusual. I said, okay, what? And he said, your connection in the master box was the only one disconnected. Yours was the only one disconnected. I said, oh, okay, that makes sense. And he looked at me like, really? I says, oh, yeah, let me tell you what I do for a living. And I told him, and uh, it was an interesting opportunity to witness. But nevertheless, so that's what happens, and... Um, it's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, just pray for this ministry. We definitely, definitely uh, need uh, the, the, the uh, <laughs> we need the prayers. Please pray for us. All right. So hopefully everything will be fine. If all of a sudden I go dead, but the plan, I mean, go dead on the air, that is. The plan is that Keith, Keith is awesome. I hope he's not hearing me talk about him behind his back and how great he is because I don't want to give him a big head. But each time I've talked to him, he's been really intelligent, competent, and et cetera. And so uh, he'll put something on the air quickly. Um, I've never met him, though. I get out there to the East Coast. If any of you guys want me to come on out to the Salem. What's it? Salem? Winston-Salem area, I think is where it is, where uh, the radio headquarters is. Anyway, any rate, love to get out there and meet him and others and, uh, you know, all that stuff. So, hey, look, we have four open lines if you want to give me a call. Eight. Seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. Let's just jump on the line. Get to Rudolph from North Carolina. Rudolph, welcome. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Um, my question is: Can a Catholic be a Christian? You mean at the same time? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I guess. <laughs> Okay, My here. Was yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My friend was asking a question about. He was saying that he was listening to faster, and I was saying that I didn't think you could be a Catholic and a Christian because, I mean, they just don't add up. And he was saying Did, that the the pastor was saying that they were Christians. Catholics were Christians. Yes. Okay. Well, you then I would. That I would say, yeah, I would say uh, that uh, you know, depending on what the guy meant, if he says, "Oh, yeah, Catholics are Christians," then I would say he uh, doesn't understand biblical theology and or does not understand what Roman Catholicism actually teaches. Now, there are certain levels of ignorance people have. Just because he's a pastor doesn't mean he's supposed to know everything. But uh, if anyone believes official. Roman Catholic theology, they cannot be a Christian. 
They're not true Christians. Official. Notice what I said official. That's not to say that there can't be true believers in the Catholic Church, but uh, they would be that in spite of the Roman Catholic theological system, which is uh, soteriological synergism. And that means a doctrine of salvation. They cooperate with God, maintain God, etc. In paragraph 1821, for example, it says that uh, in every circumstance, each one of us uh, should... Uh, hope with the grace of God to persevere to the end and obtain the joy of heaven as God's eternal reward for the good works accomplished with the grace of Christ. That's Catholic Catechism, paragraph 1829. So, yeah, they teach a false gospel. Okay, the official Catholic Church does. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And I mm-hmm. think you listen. But thank you very much. God bless you. You're welcome, man. God bless. All right. Okay. Um, I will call you back because I know I want to talk to you about something that you don't want to talk about, but there'll oh. be later. There's a well, flat earth. I knew you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Let, let's talk about it I'm now. <laughs> well, we got nobody waiting. It's not a big deal. Okay. But, uh, yeah, what about the flat? Flat Earth crud. I mean, it makes me laugh that people um, believe it. But at any rate, so what do you I want to know, talk about? But it's, it's, I don't know if it's, it's, it's... Oh, man. There's a lot I could say. But I asked you one time about the permit, but why can't why can't um, Genesis be like it's read? Because like I said, I don't. Why can't wait, wait, wait? Why finish the question? Finish the question. Why can't Genesis what? Why can't Genesis say what it says and be what it says? Like when God <laughs> says it does, separate, <laughs> it he does. separated the water, the water from above, from the water from above. Yeah, so the water above, water why below. Water? Yeah. But to see, look, here's the thing. The, the flat earthers, they'll see the water above. And what they'll interpret that to be is a dome of concentrated water. And, you know, well, where does it say that in the text? How do you know? How do you know what just wasn't heavy water in the atmosphere? Because that condition can exist. There's a great deal of concentration of moisture in the air as it is. And uh, in certain areas and conditions, you can have it be very, very, very concentrated. That's what clouds are. Clouds are concentrated areas. You can actually have highly concentrated areas of water without it being visible in in the form of clouds. So, uh, plus there's a theory that pterodactyls uh, could not have flown in the present day atmosphere because the present day atmosphere is not thick enough to support their flight. And it had to have a heavier mass in the air. I don't understand all the logic. I remember reading something like that. And uh, they said before the flood, uh, the atmosphere was really um, thick. It's called the canopy theory. And that there was a, a, a lot of water above, and that the atmosphere was very thick with moisture. And, you know, you'd have a problem breathing or anything like that. It was just, you know, a lot, lot more moisture in the air. And that because of it, the, the light ray, rays of the sun would refract around the atmosphere so that no part of the earth would be absolutely dark. And this could help uh, develop and produce. Uh, photosynthesis in plants, hence a lot more foliage and a a more even temperature so that reptiles could grow even larger, hence the the possibility of dinosaurs. I've read about this. There's a theory about this and it works. And so anyway, the canopy just could be the the waters above. What's the big deal? So these flat earthers, suddenly the flat earth is now um, uh, it's uh, you know, there's a dome of, of something, a firmament. Some say metal. Some say uh, a, a glass-like substance. You know, I just want to get in a room with a bunch of flat earthers and stare at them. You know, and they'll look at me and say, "What are you but doing?" They do. But yeah. they have you ever looked up the thing about the fishbowl operation? The fishbowl. Then when they were shooting those, when the yeah, when they were firing those. On um, missiles into the air, and they hit something. It's a, it's on 
YouTube, you can, it's called the Fishbowl Operation. The Fishbowl Operation. Operation. Okay. Yes. Um, wow. Okay. So they hit something, okay. huh? They Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. <laughs> Did they, they shot fish up in the air? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. No? Okay, they what shot, is it? What? They, shot, they shot a missile. They shot missiles up into the air, high atmosphere. Okay. And the missiles... Hit something. They did. They hit something. Uh, that's what the, in that thing I saw. Yeah, I, I, I would. It and uh -huh. it was hitting something. It looked like it was. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, put any credence in that whatsoever. Okay. okay. I, what I about the question <laughs> as you about the sun and the moon? Because if the moon is a reflector of the sun. Why yeah. when we have a solar, not solar, why when we have a, um, yeah, solar eclipse, why when, if it's reflecting the light in a full moon, it's bright and not, why when it gets in front of the sun, you can't see the sun, it goes dark, but then more light. That works in a globe <laughs> option with the Earth and the the Earth ob uh, orbiting around the Sun and the um, the Moon operating or orbiting around the Earth. That's when a solar eclipse occurs. But in the dome flat Earth theory, both the Sun and the Moon are lodged the up above. Yeah, but the You're right. If, but I'm just saying you couldn't if, see an eclipse if, from down below with that scenario. It's impossible. Why not? Well, think of this. Picture a three-foot diameter circled table. And let's just say you have a two-foot high dome that encompasses that. And you're walking around on the yeah. surface. And two lights are up above near the center, the top of the dome. How can you have an eclipse when there's when the, the, the balls are rotating around each other up above? Horizontally. They're horizontal to the plane of the Earth. Okay, so you can't have an eclipse that way. It would be impossible for anybody on Earth to ever see one. If the model doesn't work. The flat Earth model is ludicrously stupid. It doesn't work. Okay. Okay, just one question. With, so, if this is a loaded question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, geocentric, geocentric model and the heliocentric model. Is yes. it possible? Is it okay to believe a cast? Should you trust the word of a cast? The word of a cat, C A T. Catholic, no. Catholic. Oh, Catholic. Should you trust a Catholic? Well, it's like the same thing you could ask of an atheist. Can you trust an atheist? Well, yes and no. Just like, can you trust a Christian? Well, yes and no. It depends on the person. Okay. 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 But the, this flat earth stuff, you're not, come on, Rudolph. We, you've talked, we, you've called it so many times, which is fine. I, I like that. You have good questions, but you don't believe in the flat earth now, do you? I want you to answer that uh, question when we get back, okay? Because there's a break. I want to tell, okay. tell me if you believe it, because I'm going to get on to you if you do, you know, politely. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, hold on, man. We'll be, we'll be right back. Hey, folks, uh, two open lines, 877-207-2276. We'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, buddy. welcome back to the show. Let's get back on the air to Rudolph. Okay, Rudolph, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so do you believe the Earth is flat? Um, I think that there are some things that don't add up with secular science. Okay. And um, stuff so, kind of but, about. but do you believe the Earth is flat? I think that 
if you read it the way it is, <laughs> it seems like <laughs> Rudolph. <laughs> Rudolph, do you believe the Earth is flat? I think we. It's like it's. <laughs> I, Rudolph, I you it's either yes or no, or or what well, you could say you don't know. Yes, okay. But, okay. So look, the I, Earth I, is I, not flat. Okay, the Earth is not flat. All right. Look, here's something a lot of flat earthers flat don't know plane. about. Here's something you don't, a lot of flat earthers don't know about. Picture that little. And I'll give you this, and we got to go. We got callers, but look, picture the three three foot diameter flat brown thing with a dome. Okay. And the North yeah. Star is at the top middle, okay? At the top middle. That's where it would be. The problem is that uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, it's not the North Star, it's Crooks. And so it's a different North Star. It's a South Star. And you'd only see that in a globe, not flat Earth. Simple, okay? Really simple. Look that up, okay, buddy? It, the Earth is not flat. Yes, okay? sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right, God buddy. God bless. bless. Okay. Well, okay. Hey, let's get to Alberto from Georgia. Alberto, welcome. You're on the air. Yes, good afternoon, evening, Max Lick. My question mm-hmm. is, if the Bible says you want to give an account for every idle word on the count of the day of judgment, so mm-hmm. how come Christ died for a past and present and future sense? Why would we still have to give an account for every idle word? Because uh, there's a uh, an accounting of our actions. He died for our sins, so we're justified by faith. We don't have to do anything in order to be saved. But it doesn't mean that our our works won't be judged. And our works are going to be judged, but they won't judge us for salvation. Uh, the uh, you know, the but more we do for the Lord, the better reward. And the, and the least less you do, if you, you misuse his giftings, you'll have a loss of reward. Okay. That's all that's going on. All right? You're going to be held so accountable for what you judge, say. Hmm? So judge for our service to him, right? Yeah, and and how you are to your friends and how you are to your, your wife and your husband and children. And did you pick that wallet up and keep it, or did you pick that wallet up and give it back to the owner? Did you do this or do that? The All the little things, even the idle words that you say, they are on account. We're going to face God with them all. Now, I'm not worried about losing salvation because my salvation is not dependent on my actions. It's dependent upon the work of Christ. But I'm going to be held accountable for all the things that I should have done and didn't do and did wrong and did right, etc. Okay, rewards, loss of rewards. But even though, even, mm-hmm. even though I confess and am dependent from I still have to be accountable too. Absolutely. Just because you're forgiven doesn't mean God doesn't hold you responsible for the gifts and the qualities of life that you're supposed to manifest with him. You are supposed to do that. So you are supposed to be a, a good, about, godly man. Mm-hmm. Okay. But what about you're a new believer, you don't know any better, or you're under a, under a pastor, don't you touch your own history, or you're well, under a cult group, they didn't know. You're still responsible. Just because a person, no, 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 well, you're still responsible for behaving properly. And so someone like, for example, in Mormonism or Catholicism, you know, they're deceived, all right? They're still responsible before God to believe the truth. God isn't, isn't going to say in the day of judgment, oh, you were tricked by somebody. Hey, it's okay, you can come in. Not your fault. No, they're, everybody is responsible for finding the truth of God's word and to believe the scriptures. And then as Christians, we are responsible to act in a godly way before God and people. That's it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that we keep our salvation by our performance or our works. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but what, what about Christians? I know they're supposed to be loving. Sorry, like First Peter, say 3.15, percent of gospel and all that. But what about, in a way, I feel like sometimes when you're too loving, Sometimes I feel like it's like you're trying to escape persecution. You're trying to be so loving to the sinner that you don't want to offend them. And then you're trying to be so loving, you just want to be compromised. You know, scripture, like a lot of pastors are doing today, they don't want to offend the people, they want to give a sugar coated gospel. So sometimes like they, they justify, say, oh, we well, have to be a loving Christian. Yeah, Alberto. At the same time, they'd be compromising the truth. Alberto, uh, you come up with interesting uh-huh. scenarios and situations. If I ever get out there in the East Coast, I'd love to meet you. 
uh, just to shake your hand and stuff. I appreciate you. But I think maybe you might, con- might want to consider a little bit just focusing on a particular question or issue because you know, there's all kinds of conditions that people have and you wonder about those. But look, just understand, justification is a legal declaration of righteousness. It's by faith alone in Christ alone. Sanctification is the process God brings us uh, through to make us more like Christ. That process is difficult, and in that, everything we do and say will be held accountable to us. Okay? There'll be rewards and loss of rewards. Yeah. We're not saved to be polished and put uh, up on a shelf as a trophy. I tell people, think more of uh, of being a pair of sneakers. Instead of a trophy on a shelf, don't do anything. On the contrary, uh, move, do, get used, get used of God. You're going to stumble along the way. But God, in his great grace, he uplifts us and he upholds us. He's already forgiven us of everything. And so what we need to do is live for him and try and walk with him. And when we blow it, that's remembered. And uh, it's on that day of accountability, you know, loss or rewards of loss. But we're going to be in heaven. So we need to take this seriously, our walk before Christ. Jesus even said, pick up your cross daily and follow after me. And if you don't, you're not worthy of me. So this is what Christ wants of us, and we're to take our walk before him seriously. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of Christians don't. And, you know, and a lot do, and that's it. So a lot of Christians want to... That a Christian want to be in the world, at the same time, friends with the world, the Bible says, he becomes a friend of the world, becomes the enemy of God. So, right, so they want to be with the world, at the same time, going to be in church, but basically, the Bible says that you can't serve two masters. You despise right. one, hate the other, love one, hate the, or hate the other one. Right. And we ought to serve our Lord. Mm-hmm. And of course, we're we're just people, and we blow it, and we sin, and we make mistakes, and sometimes we're unrighteously angry and uh, overly judgmental. Well, on that day of judgment, Jesus says, as, as you judge, you'll be judged. Judging rewards. This is not a fearful thing, because we're, we're safe in Christ. But it is a thing of honor to God. And are we giving him the glory that's due his name uh, because of his great work for us? And uh, are we loving him? And because we're responsible for God, then what will happen is he's going to bring account of the things that we have done and the failures, the successes. It's all going to be reviewed, and then um, reward will be given to us. Okay? Mm-hmm. When I say review, like only he sees it, you're not going to put a big screen. You know, like everybody I don't know. I don't <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope it's not a big screen. I hope it's not 3D because it would be pretty bad. Okay, <laughs> for me. All right, brother. All okay, right. God bless. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Hey, three open lines. If you want to give me a call, 877 207 We'll be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we're still live. The Internet's still staying up. That's good. All right. We have three open lines. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Josh from Utah. Welcome. You're on the air. Hi. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you got? So, I'm just, I'm just thinking back to my childhood, how big uh, museums were and dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. And my question is, why are there no giant bones being found, but we find they find giant bones or dinosaur bones all over the place? Who says there aren't any giant bones found? There are many accounts. I guess the United States government just keeps it quiet or something. I don't know. I'm just saying that that there's lots of reports all over the world of of giants of different forms. Furthermore, what would constitute a giant? You know, I'm six feet tall, and uh, you know, I know a guy who's six seven. My dad was six four. Well, you know, two thousand years ago, from what I understand, because of nutrition wasn't as readily available, um, people were like five to five six. 
would I be a giant to them? You know, if I go to Japan later this year, which is a possibility, the average, uh, I think, the height there is like 5'4", or something like that, would I be a giant? I've got a friend who's six foot six, and uh, when he goes to Japan, he's a giant. So it's a relative term for one thing, but there are many accounts of uh, archaeologists finding very large bones. Uh, and somewhere the, the the heights are seven to nine feet range, and so you can do research on this, and you'll find uh, all kinds of stuff like that. It's, there's it's a lot of it. Are you there? Yes, I am. So mm. about nine foot, the biggest they get. Well, you know, I've heard uh, you know that. Uh, so you know, eight nine feet is is. Uh, kind of large. I've seen pictures of um, bones, femur bones, human femur bones that are uh, that are huge. You know, three feet, four feet long. Um, I've seen pictures of, of all kinds of stuff that's really old. You know, you're going to think about this because what? let's just say hypothetically, let's just say that they find a treasure trove of, uh, of humans that were nine feet tall. Let's just say that they find a, a place and there's you know, 20, 30 skeletons. And I mean, there it is. Uh, then what's going to happen? What would happen uh, in the scientific community if something like that was found? Now, I'm not accusing the scientific community of being dishonest, but the scientists have their own ways of suppressing information in order to promote the status quo. Not everyone does that. But I'm quite familiar with how certain scientists are forced to keep their religious beliefs um, in the wraps, in the dark. And there's a lot of this oppression going on. There's a lot. In fact, there are accounts of people who are going to speak at a place and the scientific community doesn't want them to even speak and give their opinions if it doesn't fall in line with the sta status quo of science. So this, there, there's, these kind of stories are, are out there. There's lots of them like this. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because what if you do find a scientist who finds a, a skull that's nine feet tall? Well, what's he going to do? Is he going to report it? Because if he does r report it uh, and then defends it, well, is he risking his career? This is stuff you have to think about because it doesn't fit the status quo. Let, like I said, let's just say that they find 30 uh, uh, nine feet skeletons, average height, whatever. Well, then that would mean then that there was a race of giants. And then, the, then you got issues to deal with because in ancient Greece, there were uh, legends of giants. Oh, now all of a sudden, there they are. In the Bible, there's speech of giants. Well, does that give credence to now myths and the Bible? We can't have that now, can we? So, you know, there's there's stuff there. I'm not an expert on this, but I have seen lots of information over the years about varying giants that have been uh, bones that have been discovered. Okay. Do you do you know how how big the giants in the Bible were? I know it said like they were. I don't know how many cubits high, but how much yeah, is a cubit? A cubit is the length from the tip of the hand, tip of the finger to the elbow. And uh, some say it was as small as 12, and some say as high as, I think, 20 or 22 inches as long. And the average, is, is, I've heard, is 18 inches. So if you were to go to 18 inches, then you can get some stuff, uh, some calculations. And so... Uh, it, depending on the, the cubit that was used, Goliath would have been uh, up to you know nine and a half feet tall, or even much shorter, depending on the cubit. But if that's the case, then it would have meant, say he was nine feet tall, then David, I don't know if it gives his height, but proportionally he might have only been four feet tall, if if that's the case. If uh, Excuse me, I was thinking ahead. If uh, the real height of Goliath was, say, six feet, or six or six and a half feet, which is not unreasonable, then David would have been four feet if there's a comparison of, of the length of heights of cubits and things like that. So there's a bit of relativity there. But, yeah, there are many accounts all over the world throughout the past few hundred years of uh, giant bones being um, unearthed. You can check them out. In fact, I just randomly uh, uh, did a research during the, the break on this, a New York Times article dated... 
a dateline uh, with a dateline of of December 19, 19, 1897 said one of the three mounds discovered in this town had been opened. It was found uh, inside a skeleton of a man of gigantic size. The bones measured from head to foot were over nine feet. Uh, and so, you know, that there's stuff. In 1912, the New York Times reported discovery of 18 giant human skeletons in Lake Dalavan in Wisconsin. Their heights range from 7.6 wow. feet to 10 feet. Uh, you know, and so I'm just scanning through this article. Where to get this from? CDAPress.com. I've never done an article on this to to uh, to see. So I've done the research on it. So in Wisconsin, they found them. With what? With in Wisconsin, you said. Yeah, there's different ones. Apparently, I'm just reading. Uh, I just did a search and and to see. Uh, so even Josephus, oh, interesting, uh, the great Jewish scholar historian who wrote about the early days of Christianity, told about giants. For they, quote, for which reasons they removed their camp at to Hebron, and they had taken it. They slew all the inhabitants. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, so there, you know, I, I need to do some more evidence, uh, search for that. I need to find. You know, sources like National Geographic and, you know, Discovery and things like that, where they find more uh, newer stuff. Because I want to make sure that it's le- legitimately uh, documented. Okay? Great. Yeah. yeah How I about just, this? I, I wonder about dinosaurs and, and if it was giant bones, maybe. Because the Bible doesn't speak about dinosaurs, right? Yes, it does. Just go to the last couple of chapters, oh. three, three or four chapters of Job. And, uh, in fact, let me do this. Let's see. Carm dinosaurs. Oops, spell it right might help. Uh, and I went through and uh, extracted the information out of there. So uh, the Bible talks about different ones, different kinds of things. Um in the anyway, in the book of Job, for the exact references, but yeah, you can uh, you can check it out, okay. And so, okay, there's a, land, thank you. There's a huge land-based creature and a huge water-based creature. One of them brings forth fire. Uh, another one, it the the tail moves like a cedar. You know, cedar's a big tree. So there's these descriptions in there. It's huge, okay. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, man. God bless. Okay. Hey, folks, if we have, uh, oh, no, if we have, we have uh, four open lines, 877-207-2276. We have almost a minute left, I think, before the break. Give us a call. Tim from Salt Lake City. Tim, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing all right. I wanted to, uh, yeah, want to talk a little bit about church. Uh, I realized this point in my life I was almost Bible illiterate but yet I've attended churches and uh, for the last two years I've been studying online with just great scholars that open up that word Uh, Mm -hmm. and I get you know seven eight hours a week study verse by verse chapter by chapter where Mm -hmm. I get a phrase or two in church and a sermon and of course all the ceremony. I know Christ definitely loved his church, and there's reasons to go to church, but uh, I wanted to get your opinion on it. On what? Going to church or the level of instruction in yeah. churches as a whole? Yeah, the level of instruction, where I just get dearly okay. fed by some of the best pastors All right, well, tell you world. what, we got a break, so hold on, because I, I, I want to comment about that. I think it would be an interesting topic. Hey, folks, there is the music. That means we got a break before the last segment. If you want to give me a call, four open lines, 877-207-2276. We'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone. Hey, give me a call. 877-207-2276. We have four open lines. All right, let's get back with Tim from Salt Lake City. Okay, Tim. So, yep. you still there? Still here. Okay. All right, yep. so 
I'm smiling, okay? Um, so you're saying then that you go to these churches, not all churches, of course, but these churches, and you're not really getting fed much. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Comparatively. Yeah. Now, um, see, that's a problem I've had for years. Um, and, and I've always chalked it up to, I study more than the average pastor by far. And been doing this for 42 years, get super in depth on things. I'm not saying, hey, look at me, I'm great. No, 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 no. So I've always had a problem when I go to church. I'm like, well, okay, uh, let's, let's see. And they'll often quote a reference, and I know the reference. Sometimes I'll know what the Greek says. Sometimes I'll know cross references, I'll know theological points, and they don't get touched on. And it's, you know, a little frustrating, but I, I say, oh, okay. You know, they can't know that, and they're not apologists, and, and that's okay. You know, they're doing pastor stuff. I need to focus and learn. And sometimes I will learn uh, things that I just didn't know. You know, I don't know everything. So there's a blessing. But I have found uh, generically the pastors uh, that I've experienced don't, te- ver- don't teach very deeply. I think they might be afraid. I, I don't know. Don't they know? These deeper doctrines, I don't know, but that's the same problem. I well, have. The, the, the the pastors I I study under online, they're very bold, uh, and they're out there, and they condemn a lot of churches for not standing up. But mm. you know, it opens the Bible when you get these scholars that understand all the languages, even mm-hmm. the early Asian languages. They just open that word up for the you know for the last two years. I've learned. I mean, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> I want to learn yeah. God's word. You know, I used, I'm from Southern California, and I uh, don't know if you've ever heard of Walter Martin, Dr. Walter Martin, the late Dr. Walter Martin. Have you heard of him? No. 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 Well, you ought to uh, look him up. Dr. Walter Martin. He was a very gifted speaker and a very gifted teacher and uh, had apparently a photographic memory. Now that's quite a high standard, all right? And so uh, I I would go down there, my friend Charlie and I would go listen to him, and and he was a fantastic preacher and communicator. And so that's a pretty high bar. And then when he passed away, uh, it was just very difficult to find a church that would, that would engage, that's a good way. Uh, There was a lot of stuff that was just the surface level. You know, it reminds me once, locally, a few years ago, I went to a church. I'd heard some good things about this church. And so I went and checked it out. No one said hi to me. Remember that? Uh, I just walked in. I wasn't rude, wasn't hiding. Uh, I think there was a nod or two, and that was about it. But no one, you know, talked to me. And uh, I remember sitting alone because all the people were mingling and doing the stuff with the people that they know. And okay, whatever. And the pastor gets up, and uh, I remember this so clearly. And he opened up. He said, "Everybody turn to Colossians 3. I went, ooh, ooh, this is good stuff. And then he read uh, these four verses. And I'm going to read them to you. Therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, Keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is revealed, or excuse me, when Christ who is our life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. And I went, oh no, this is awesome. This is, what an incredibly rich text. I mean, right in there, raised up with Christ. Yeah. Really, the crucifixion of Christ, his death, burial, we're ad- identification with, with, with him. That had deal with Romans 6 and federal headship. Absolutely. Seeking the things above where Christ is. This talks about the glory of God, the majesty of Christ, his authority, his position. You go to Acts chapter 7, 55 through 60. At the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above. This is why. To continue to action. We're to do this to be renewed by the transforming of our mind and the things that are above, not on the things of the earth. You have died. You're more federal headship. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. The phrase in God is really important. With Christ hidden. I mean, all this stuff. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, that means the return of Christ. You'll be revealed with him in glory, the the resurrected body, the fullness of what we are, all this stuff. And he 
<laughs> skimmed over it with such light speed, lightness and quickness, that I was severely disappointed. And it was just, yeah. it was, and I'm like, oh no. And how about this? This is for the pastors and the elders out there. You go to a sermon. I heard locally. I went within the past year of time. I went to a church that was um, reformed. There's there's uh, quite a few around here. I went to a reformed church. And this pastor, I was told, to be a really good pastor. And he, he's a great uh, little, uh, preacher. Okay, I'm going to go listen. And, uh, and he preached moralism. Do you know what moralism is? You know where oh, it is? You bet. Okay. Well, yep. for those who don't know, moralism is preaching morality. So you know the Bible says uh, don't lie. Okay. So you don't lie. So don't lie because lying's bad. Because lying hurts people. Because lying's a sin. So don't lie. Therefore, don't lie. Great stories. Don't lie. Everybody claps at the end of the sermon. That's moralism. It, moralism occurs when a sermon can be preached identically in a Mormon church, for example, or uh, even a Roman Catholic church or a Jehovah's Witness church. Uh, moralism yeah. is being moral to be, for the sake of being moral, be good for the sake of being good. Christ-centered preaching is the reason we don't lie is because we have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ who redeemed us and bore our sins in his body. You are no longer your own. And therefore, after all this is said, this is the reason you're not to lie. Not only does it offend God, but not only, but because that sin brought Christ, the second person of the Trinity, incarnate, to the cross where he spread his arms and died. I mean, this is the difference, you know. And that these kind of sermons, the Christ-centered sermons, aren't going to be preached in those other kinds of churches because they don't believe in the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So, I went well, and I heard, and I heard, I heard the, yeah, yeah, I heard the fullness of God, like you said, and they cut it off. Me, I, I'd love to hear you talk about the fullness of God. You would mm. say more than one sentence. Yeah, and, and you know, it all depends on the context too. And you, you know, I went to this one church this one time. Now, maybe he was the pastor was going through quickly for a reason. But I was just frustrated that time, you know, and, and I'm not saying he wasn't a good pastor, but I was just frustrated. And when I went to hear this uh, supposedly really good pastor and all I heard was moralism, I was like, what is going on? And then you don't hear much depth of, of stuff. You know, when I teach my Bible study on Thursday nights and I'm working on it today and yesterday and I spent a couple hours a day on it. I'm going through the Greek. I'm showing the Greek. I'm, I'm, I'll be talk, talking on the issue, the nature of the fall and pride and humility and the initiation of, of uh, the fall and the person of Satan. I'm probably going to be getting into the issue of free will and the issue of, uh, of libertarian versus compatibilist free will because these are necessities to talk about the origin of sin, which is the foundation of pride. Which James James four says you know resist the proud, and so you know going to get into this, and uh, I want more. I want depth. You do too. You see, hey, you and I are alike. You know. Yeah. Well, so is your uh, your Bible study is that online on your yes. website or is it on mm -hmm. the radio? It's okay, on. I'm um, have to, have to. Yeah, it'll be on Matt Slick Live. Uh, uh, Let's see, maybe Charlie knows exactly which one, but it's on Matt Slick uh, YouTube. Matt, Matt Slick YouTube, I think it is. And then I post, uh, oh, okay. I just do the link, and then I have a TV above me, and I go, I, uh, go through the notes. The goal is to put all the notes up online first so that when anybody joins in, they just go to the link, and they can look at the notes. I, and what I, it's evolved now. What I'll be doing is going through the same link, the same notes, and scrolling through them on my laptop, as I sit and people can see above, they have notes in their hands. When people come to my Bible studies, I hand them, I hand them the outline notes, and I preach through these. And people are writing notes. And when I'm done with uh, with the Book of James, I'm supposed to go. They've asked me to go through the Doctrine of the Trinity again, where I have a 500 word statement that I've developed that I, I teach. So it takes uh, five one and a, one hour to one and a half hour sessions to go through each 
of the five sections on the nature of God, the yeah, acidity I know, of God. I know, I know you really get deep. Uh, some of it's above my head, but have have I I follow Melissa Scott? She's out of Glendale. Her uh, Ooh, husband wow. was a famous. Yeah, I know about him. He yeah. was a famous. James, you know. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he blew it because yeah. she's a pastor, uh, uh, and uh, he couldn't find anybody qualified, and so he got her to be the pastor, and she shouldn't be a pastor. So that's wrong. Um, what was yeah. his first name, Charlie? Something uh, Gene Scott, right? No, 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 this, no. Uh, no, no. Was Gene her Scott's name is middle. Melissa. I'm trying to think of her husband. He was Jeez. famous. Uh, yeah, he has a uh, record for being on TV the most. Uh, yeah, Gene Scott. No, it wasn't Gene Scott. It was somebody else. Yeah. Uh, what, no, I think it was. Yeah, I maybe. Maybe Gene sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, but, uh, her husband was Gene Scott. Yeah, someone typed in. So, uh, yeah, and I, I used to watch him, and I've learned stuff from him. He's quite quite gifted, and he passed away. And I think she was a Playboy model or something like that and married him or something. And he'd smoke cigars on TV. She has, mm -hmm. she has the largest uh, private collection of manuscripts and old documents in the world. Right, because he uh, developed it, right, and she has it now. Yeah, yeah she... But I won't listen to her because she's a woman pastor uh, in that place, and I'm sorry, I'm just not going to go that way, you know? Well, Timothy was having problems in the church with some women, you know? I, I don't believe yes. it means all women. <laughs> look at look at how he used women in the Bible. They, when yeah. the men wouldn't stand up, he'd send the women. I, I understand, and they were but, women are, but women aren't... But women aren't to be pastors yeah. and teachers that's all if she if she was not a pastor like that, that's fine I, I would listen because she's got a lot of knowledge she stood and she learned a lot but uh, we need yeah. to stick with scripture we need to stick with scripture okay all right yeah okay all righty thanks so much I'll uh, listen to you uh, to your Bible study okay well sounds good brother all right God bless Th thanks Matt. you too okay. bye bye all right all right, well, hey, there you go. Uh, we've got less than a minute left on the show. I hope you enjoyed the show, and by God's grace, we'll be back on the air tomorrow. Tonight, I'll be on Clubhouse, uh, or Clubhouse on the phone, Club Deck on the computer uh, at uh, in two hours from now, so that would be 9 p.m. Eastern time, where I just do Q&A. People just fire questions at me. A lot of uh, sometimes hostile people come in. We have some pretty deep discussions. And then tomorrow night, I'll be teaching on, uh, or through, continuing through the book of James, starting in James chapter 4, and that'll be online as well. Whew. Anyway, there you go. May the Lord bless you, and by His grace, we'll be back on the air tomorrow, and we'll talk to you then. We'll see everybody. God bless. Bye. Another program powered by the Truth Network.